Mesh intercom on. Open Mesh. Channel 1. Hey, Don, can you hear me? Don, I'm on, I'm on Open Mesh. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Cruise Man. Today, we're going to take a look at the brand new Cena 50S and 50R Bluetooth communicators. Did Cena get it right? Gotta get it right now. Yeah, push over the limits with you. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that Cena did not pay to have this video done. However, they did send me the 50S and 50R to review for this video. The 50 series is Cena's flagship communicator platform. The design of the 50S is very similar to that of the 30K. On the Cena website, the 50S and 50R sell individually for about $339 each. If you purchase the dual pack, you can get those for $5.99. You may also be able to find these at a slightly reduced price on my Amazon page. I will put the links in the description of this video where you can check to see the availability and pricing. The main feature that sets the 50 series apart from other Bluetooth headsets is the new Mesh 2.0 technology. Without getting too technical, Mesh 2.0 devices provide an unparalleled level of communication. Cena claims that it delivers intelligent routing management to an adaptive and autonomous network. So what does this mean in the real world? Well, my test showed that the Mesh 2.0 delivers super crisp and clear intercom communications. And the addition of Open Mesh makes connecting to other Mesh 2.0 equipped riders completely seamless. Basically, these headsets offer three different network options. Bluetooth, which allows from two to four connections in a group. A group Mesh intercom between two and 24 riders or open mesh, which is virtually unlimited. You can have any number of riders in the open mesh. You know, I gotta say, this Mesh 2.0 is actually pretty amazing, and maybe even uh, you use the word revolutionary. I think so. It'll, it'll, it's a paradigm shift in motorcycle communications. Yeah, just the ability to ride up on somebody that's using the same system and not have to pull over and figure out a way to pair up a group for a group ride is really a huge uh, jump in technology that Seton has got here. To begin using Mesh Intercom, you simply raise the antenna and press the Mesh button. With Group Mesh, you can create a private group that supports up to 24 riders. Cena claims this group can communicate over a range of up to 5 miles, assuming a 1 mile range between each communicator. Now, my tests would reveal that about a half a mile is more reasonable range expectation, but my tests were done in city driving. On the open road, perhaps 1 mile is achievable. But even with a half a mile between communicators, that would still be up to three miles of range for the entire private group, which is not bad. Now in open mesh, this is the real game changer because it allows you to communicate with anyone participating in a mesh 2.0 network within a range of up to five miles or three miles based on my one half mile test results. With open mesh, there is no pairing required between headsets. As long as your communicator is on the same channel as the other open mesh riders, you will be connected automatically. And if you currently own a 30K, you can update the firmware to give you the mesh 2.0 capabilities. In our test, we found the open mesh to connect seamlessly and reliably whenever our communicators were in range of each other. The intercom audio is crisp and clear and even has some duplexibility just in case you try to talk over each other. The only issue we experienced was in one particular section of roadway in Dallas where there must have been some sort of interference, 
my intercom transmissions on my 50R became very garbled in Don's helmet. This continued until I turned my mesh off and back on. From then on, it was crystal clear again. There is a noticeable lag or delay in communications when you're right next to each other. So a rider passenger might notice this delay when using the communicators. Basically, if you're close enough to the other person where you can hear their voice without the communicator, you may notice that delay. But in fairness, I've noticed that delay with every communicator I've ever tested, and you do adapt to it pretty quickly. Another big convenience and safety feature of both the 50S and the 50R is the ability to control many of the features using voice commands. This allows riders to keep their hands where they belong on the handlebars while riding. It's a very cool feature and it works very well. You basically speak the words into the microphone, Hey Cena, and follow it with a command. So if we take a quick walk around the 50S, you'll notice it looks a lot like the 20S or 20S Evo. Very similar. It's kind of similar in size as well. It might be a little bit bulkier, maybe a little bit thicker, but you'll notice some things that are very familiar with Cena. You'll notice the jog dial, which is very prominent, uh, very easy to use with your gloves. It's kind of a multifunction dial. You can rotate it to change volume and to make other selections. And you can also click on it. It has a clickable uh, feel, which is very nice. And then if we look at the bottom of the unit, uh, you'll notice the contacts. This is where it mates up with the cradle that you mount to your helmet. So this is where all your power and connection to the microphones and speakers come in. One thing I do like that they've added to the 50R and the 50S is this USB-C style charging port. This allows the unit to charge very rapidly. You can get a full charge in about one hour. And it gives you about 14 hours or up to 14 hours of life depending on which intercom system you're using, either Bluetooth or the Mesh 2.0. If you move around to the back of the unit, you'll see the phone button, which is pretty common. You'll notice that on the other Cena models as well. And then you have on top this mesh antenna that kind of stows out of the way when it's not in use. And to open this antenna or to engage the antenna, you basically pull outward right here. There's a little nub you can kind of feel there if you can see that. So you pull that out, it flips up. And then underneath is where you've got your your mesh button. And the mesh button is what puts the headset into mesh intercom mode. So if we look at the 50R by comparison, you'll notice it has a little bit smaller form factor than the 50S. It's a little bit different design too. It doesn't have the jog dial. Instead, it has these three control buttons. The center button is raised up a little higher than the plus and the minus button. And these are the buttons that you use to kind of go through the various menus and to do the things that you want to do with the 50R. Now, it does also have the USB-C style charging port, which is a nice feature. And it has the mesh button on the back. It does not have a phone button like the 50S. But it does have the mesh antenna, but you do you actually push this one in to release it and engage it. And uh, there is no button underneath that antenna, but that's how you put the uh, antenna into mesh mode by pressing this little button on the back and making sure that antenna is up. Now, the other major difference that you'll notice in the 50R, in addition to be a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller form factor, is that it has the wires for the microphone and the speakers built into the unit. It's hardwired into the unit. Now, what that means is you can't really easily take this unit off of your helmet to recharge it. You basically, you can pop it off. It's designed to be mounted with either double-sided adhesive tape or hook and loop fasteners like I'm using here. 
and they do provide those in the kit. There is a mounting cradle that comes with the 50R, but it's really designed to be used with adhesive strips, which means this is semi-permanently mounted to that cradle. Now, I modified mine, and I'm using the hook and loop fasteners with the cradle just because I didn't want to put the uh, adhesive strips or the hook and loop fasteners directly onto my helmet. This allows me, if I need to later, remove the entire system. So that's the main difference between the two. There's a lot more features on the 50S than there are on the 50R, and I will go into that here in just a little bit. Basically, this model is designed more for an adventure rider, somebody that doesn't really need all of the features uh, that you have on the 50S. I could tell no difference in the performance between the two. For somebody that rides primarily by yourself uh, and occasionally in a group, uh, the 50R would be a great choice. Now, if you want to compare this to, say, the Cardo Pack Talk Bold, you'll see the 50R is still even a little bit larger than the Cardo. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit thicker, and it's actually a little bit longer. So the form factor of the Cardo Pack Talk Bold is still a little bit smaller than the 50R and certainly smaller than the 50S. The first thing you notice about the 50S is that it's larger than the 50R and it uses the more traditional Cena jog dial interface. The 50R uses these soft touch rubber buttons. The 50S mounts to your helmet using this clamp kit or you can use a glued mount. However, you have fewer features with the glued mount. The 50R could be mounted directly to your helmet using hook and loop fasteners or double-sided adhesive tape. Or you can also use this clamp kit with double-sided adhesive tape. The 50S includes three types of microphones, a boom mic, a wired boom, and a wired mic. The 50R only includes two microphones, a wired boom and a wired mic. The wired mic is used for full-face helmets. The 50S has a slightly larger battery than the 50R, giving up to 9 hours in mesh or 14 hours in Bluetooth intercom mode. The 50R gets 8 hours in mesh and 13 hours in Bluetooth. The clamp kit on the 50S has an auxiliary port for a non-Bluetooth MP3 player. The 50R does not have this feature. The 50S clamp kit includes a 3.5mm earbud jack, allowing the use of your own earbuds instead of the high-quality speakers. The 50R does not include that jack. However, Cena does offer an earbud adapter split cable so that you can use earbuds with the 50R. The 50S has an ambient mode which activates an internal microphone to pick up sounds from the outside world. The 50R does not have this feature. The 50S can be removed from the helmet when using the clamp kit or the glued mounting adapter to recharge the unit or for storage. The 50R cannot be removed if mounted using double-sided adhesive tape. However, it can be removed if you use hook and loop fasteners or the clamp kit. However, the mic and speaker cables must be disconnected. And as you can see here, these connectors are very small and I'm not sure how they would withstand multiple connections and disconnections. The speakers for the 50S and 50R appear to be the same. However, they use different connectors, therefore they are not compatible with each other. Even though neither the 50S or 50R have an IPX waterproof rating, the 50R would appear to be more resistant to harsh riding conditions, such as adventure riding. The jog dial and cradle contacts on the 50S provide opportunities for moisture to get in and potentially cause problems. So if you routinely ride in the rain, you may want to opt for the 50R. Adventure riders should definitely consider the 50R. Before using the Cena 50 Utility app, you must first establish a Bluetooth connection between your phone and the headset. Do this in the Bluetooth connection setting on your cell phone. 
I'm showing this on an Android phone, but it's very similar on an iPhone. Here, I'm looking for the Bluetooth headset. Follow the directions on how to put the headset into pairing mode. When the status lights flash blue and red, you're in mobile phone pairing mode. Once you accept the pairing on your phone, your headset should show up in the list of paired devices. Now you can open the Cena 50 Utility app. This app allows you to adjust many of the settings of your Bluetooth headset. For example, I'm going to use the small menu at the top left and go into Device Settings. And once I get into Device Settings, I'm going to go to Mesh Intercom and I can adjust the volume of my Mesh Intercom from here. If you want to increase the volume from your music source, in my case the Honda Goldwing, you can adjust the volume under Music. Refer to your Cena user guide for all the benefits and features of the Cena 50 app. To pair your headset to the Goldwing, get into the audio setting menu and then down to Bluetooth setting. I'm going to use the passenger headset pairing for this headset. The next step is to put the headset into pairing mode Refer to your user guide for your particular headset on how to put the headset into pairing mode for the mobile phone. Now go back to the Goldwing and click on the Inquiry menu item, and it will begin searching for the headset. Eventually, you should see the Cena headset show up underneath the Searching Headset window. Press the Enter button to abort that window and close it, and then select the Cena headset in the menu and click the Enter button again. Now the unit should be paired with your Honda Goldwing. Once you see this message, click OK. Now your headset is successfully paired. They want to have it in for August in Charlotte, North Carolina, but state and local officials have the ability to limit the size of any large. Gotta get it right now. Yeah, push your limits with you. I've been riding with the Cena 50S for well over 18 months now, and here's what I've found out. I absolutely love Mesh 2.0 and the Open Mesh technology. In my opinion, it's worth buying these headsets just for that one feature. I found the Bluetooth pairing to the Goldwing, my cell phone, and my GPS to be very straightforward and very simple. I'm very pleased with the quality of the audio coming from the speakers, and I like the rapid charging available through the USB-C style connectors. I'm a little disappointed that the Cena headsets are still not waterproof rated. However, I do feel that the 50R is probably much more weatherproof than the 50S because of the lack of the jog dial and the sealed wiring going into the base of the unit. With all this great technology on group communications, I wish they had a micro SD card or some other way to record group rides. I would also like to see a single connector on the 50R so that you don't have to disconnect both speakers and the microphone to remove it from the helmet. There were a few times with the 50S that it failed to reconnect to my Goldwing audio system after I had removed it for recharging, well that pretty much sums up my review of the Cena 50S and 50R. If you currently own the 50S or 50R, put it in the comments down below and let me know what you think of these incredible headsets. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available. <music>